The rise of AI has been extremely fast in the past few months. Researching for a few days, I found that Stable Cascade is the latest image generation model from Stability AI, which is 243% better than XDXL. Additionally, it has the benefits of faster generation, good text generation, and better hands with prompts. There are multiple ways to try this model. First, we can try it directly on the demo page on Hugging Face. So I'll paste in my text prompt prepared. I'll click run and let's see what we get from Stable Cascade. I would adjust the prompt to see if we can fit in the full image into the picture by using a full body of a young woman in the prompt. I'll click generate again to see the second result using Stable Cascade. Okay, so now we have the full body into the image, but I am not too excited about her hands, which doesn't look natural. Let's see if we can modify some of the settings down here. We are not using a negative prompt. As you guys can see, Stable Cascade is doing all of this without having a negative prompt. Uh, I'll leave the resolution at the same. Uh, number of images, uh, let's keep this at two. And this is a bit different from our usual CFG scale. Let's keep everything at default. Let's scroll up again to hit run to see what we get from the third adjustment. Stable Cascade does a good job with shorter prompts. So I'll just adjust this to a person with hands. Hit run to see what comes out, out of this. All right, so already this is looking way, way, way better from the initial prompt we had. I'm not sure if this is because the prompt was way shorter, but from this result, this is looking amazing from Stable Cascade. Let's have a second Stable Cascade test with text. I'm going to adjust the prompt again to a movie poster, including a text that says Robocop. So let's see how best this turns out again with Stable Cascade. Right, so this is crisp, high resolution. This is amazing. And this followed the prompt very, very accurately. I'm very impressed by the text of Robocop, which um, didn't give any typo or any misspelling. But how can we get the same experience inside Comfy UI? Uh, before we can try this in Comfy UI, we have to download the models for Stable Cascade. So firstly, to get the models, we go onto this page again on Hugging Face. We can see a little information um, regarding Stable Cascade. And you guys can always go ahead to uh, read the technical details involved. So we scroll back to the files and versions. And down here, we can see a list of all the models out here. We are going to need a stage A, stage B, and also um, stage C. So stage B and stage C are the unit models which will go into your Comfy UI models unit folder directory. Stage A represents the VAE model which will go into Comfy UI models VAE folder. Additionally, we'll need a clip model which will be under the text and code folder. Once this is downloaded, go into Comfy UI model clip folder and place this in here. So for easy recognition, I have also renamed my model here to Stable Cascade. Once we have all of these downloaded, uh, be patient because these files are very huge in size and we should be ready to open Comfy UI to use Stable Cascade. Inside Comfy UI, we have an empty canvas and we will start by building the nodes to get an idea of how all of this works. To start with the first node will be the save image node. I'm going to build this a bit backward for a good understanding. From the save image node, I'll just drag this out, connect to the VAE node. From the VAE node, right click to add node. Down to sampling, we select the K sampler. From here, we connect the K sampler to the VAE decode. So next, we right click to add node. We go to loaders and we load the VAE node to connect to the VAE decode. Uh, we now need to add the conditioning for our text prompt. So we need our positive and our negative prompt. I'll change this to positive to keep track of the title. I'll duplicate this to have a negative prompt as well. So I'll be renaming most of the nodes so we can understand visually what inputs and outputs is feeding into each other. I'll also change the colors here from a green for positive and also a red for negative. Let's now feed the positive into the positive case sampler and also we'll feed the negative text into the negative case sampler. 
So next, I'll drag the latent image out to have um, the latent image node. This is going to help us with the image size of the generation. And we can see this almost represents a default text to image workflow. Uh, so from here, how can we include the additional node for stable cascade to generate a prompt? So we need two unit loader nodes for the models we downloaded earlier, which is stage B and stage C. By naming all the nodes, it will also be easy for us to follow along with. So next, we need the load clip node for the stable cascade model. I'll double click to search here and I'll click on load clip. Inside the load clip, make sure to select the model for stable cascade. Also make sure to change the type from stable diffusion to stable cascade. This is very, very important. Link the clip to the positive node and also to the negative node. Uh, so the next model we need is the model sampling for stable cascade. From here, I'll drag stage C into the model sampling cascade node. And from there, I'll move this into the case sampler. I think I renamed this incorrectly. So uh, let's rename this to stage C, as you guys can see here. And from here, we also make sure the model in stage B is B, and also the model for stage C node is also stage C. I'll also rename the case sampler so it's easy for us to identify as stage C. Uh, next, I'll duplicate the case sampler and I'll also rename this to stage B. So as you guys can see, we are creating two different samplers for both stage C and stage B. So from here, I would connect the stage B node into the case sampler of stage B. So next, I'll link the case sampler of stage B into the VAE decode. This breaks the connection from stage C, and I'll explain that very soon. I'll search for the next node, which will be the conditioning zero out. Scrolling down, we can find it here, and I'll click on it to create the node. I'll also search for the node stable cascade stage B conditioning also tidy things up a bit so the connections are always easy for us to follow along with. Dragging the positive prompt into condition zero out and this feeds into the stage B conditioning. From here stage B conditioning also goes into the K sampler stage B. And next I'll reroute this to feed into the negative input of the K sampler. I'll drag the VAE a bit closer to make space. So I'm going to delete the empty latent image we already have and we are going to use a new node, which is the stable cascade empty latent image. Uh, we can find this down here. Uh, click on that to create the node. And we can see we have a stage B output and a stage B input. So from here, we are going to control uh, both of the case samplers from the same resolution once we change this. I'll reroute this to follow along easily. And we put this into the case sampler of stage B. To recover everything so this is not confusing, we have the stage B into the stage B K sampler, stage C into the stage C K sampler, and also we have the load clip into the positive and the negative prompt. Uh, the empty latent image is controlling both the K sampler B and K sampler C. And make sure the output of the latent image is going into the right input of the K samplers. From here, we are done by building a complete workflow for stable cascade. Uh, make sure to also come into the VAE and change the VAE to stage A, which we downloaded earlier into the VAE folder. From here, I'm going to put in a default prompt to test this workflow inside Comfy UI. We are also going to use the highest resolution for stable cascade, which is 1024 by 1024. I'll change the batch size to 4. From here, we go to kill prompt to see what we get from this. And uh, there's an error here for some reason. I am missing the connection here for stage C into the stage B conditioning. So to fix this, I'm just going to drag in the latent image, which we disconnected earlier. So let's see if this works again by hitting the Q prompt. We just have to be patient for the first time we are generating since we are using stable cascade for the first time. All right, so we can see our results here, which we might have a few typos here and there, but we can still find our image in here 
uh, saying stable cascade from what we have here. So these are a few examples I have tried in my spare time uh, using stable cascade. From the rendering time in fast generations, I'm hoping we can see stable cascade very soon with animations as well. Hope this video was able to give you guys a simple basic understanding of how stable cascade works. Uh, destroy the like button as always and you can also check out these tutorials about stable diffusion and I'll see you guys in the next video.